I started out in theater. I am a failed actor, basically. <laughs> um, uh, when I was younger, um, I participated in local community theater with uh, my older sister. She's two years older. And she had real talent. She can sing. She can act. Um, and I tried all those things, but usually ended up helping paint a backdrop, collect props, or do something, you know, on the community theater level. So that's sort of where I got my first taste of what I would eventually do, but I hadn't translated it in my mind as to something that that, that was something that you could do. When I got to university, my father really wanted me to get a business degree to hedge bets sort of a thing. So uh, I think I got through a whole year of um, prereq courses and was just hating life. Back when I went to university, you could have a summer job and earn your tuition because I went to a local state school in Michigan. I graduated from Eastern Michigan University, which lives in the giant shadow of University of Michigan, which is in Ann Arbor, Mich Ann Arbor, Michigan. Everybody knows U of M. Not that many people know Eastern Michigan, EMU, which is just off to the side. They had a great art, fine art department. And I started to take art classes. And um, eventually my degree ended up being um, a Bachelor of Fine Arts in drawing and painting. So I was an artist. So I knew people in the theater department because if you worked backstage, for the whole quarter, you earned like $90 a month or something. And that actually covered my rent because I shared a room with a friend. It was crazy. I'm older, but I'm, it probably seems I'm much older for rent like that. But anyway, so I took a job building scenery uh, and didn't know anything about it, but had faked my way through it at that point, uh, you know, with community theater. So really learned how to build it with hand tools and uh, canvas flats and painting and, and learning faux painting techniques and stuff. And uh, there was a tech director back there who kind of took me under his wing and uh, he taught me all the techniques. And he used to get outside jobs at little 99 seat uh, non-equity theaters. Uh, even in Detroit, we had non-equity theaters. Uh, and there was one in particular, the Attic Theater, which was famous in its day. And um, I used to help him build and paint the scenery for money on the side. So I really kind of got down and dirty with the theater thing. So when I graduated with my fine arts degree, living in Detroit, not knowing what to do with that, um, I managed to get a job with him. This tech director got a job at a theater that the Needlelanders, um, famous theater family, right? Uh, we're reopening um, a theatrical house um, for stage productions just outside of Detroit. And they were casting and producing and rehearsing in New York. And then they'd bring it out and try it out for Broadway outside of Detroit, which they'd done like 30 years before. So I did a season of that. That was very uh, entertaining and was learned a lot of life lessons with that. But then friends of mine from high school were building scenery for commercials. Now back in the late 80s, 90s, um, there was a lot of business commercial wise to be done in the Detroit area because of all the car companies and they had regional accounts for drugstores and stuff like that. So I really sort of made a name for myself also building, painting, decorating sets, you know, doing it all. So I really didn't have a concept of really how the movie industry or the television industry worked um, behind the scenes, um, below the line production. I did that for about five years. And then a friend of mine moved out here and got a job on a movie called Army of Darkness, which everyone knows Sam Raimi directed. Well, all of us went to school with Sam Raimi. He was uh, two grades ahead of me. Most of us had worked with him back in our hometown in some capacity or another on one of his low budget movies. I mean, that was when it was, you know, super low budget. You work for, uh, you know, a peanut butter sandwich. So he was doing another version of Army of Darkness, but a, a more better funded one. And so I came out to work on, on that. And so that's where I really uh, began to learn uh, what the business was all about, kind of how it worked, how the art department worked, how the jobs sort of divvied up between art director, production designer, set decorator, the lead man, the swing gang, you know, the whole crew. So that was a real great education because you could, but also it was grueling because we used to have to drive out to Acton every day 
from LA and they had built this castle on a bluff in Acton, but down below was Tippi Hendren's um, lion preserve. And so right around feeding time, <laughs> around 4, 4.30, you could hear the lions and tigers and roaring because they were, you know, they wanted their dinner. So just hoping that none of them got out and climbed up the hill. So, I mean, crazy, you know, bad old day stories. Mm -hmm.